Major Cat, backyard explorer extraordinaire. Tally ho! Tally ho! Hi, everybody. I'm Ava. I'm a youth camp counselor and program volunteer here at Five Rivers Metro Parks. Welcome to Nature Cat Camp, where we virtually explore our local parks and challenge you to explore the nature right outside your window. We have a fun day at camp planned for you, so let's get started. Are you ready? Everybody say, tally ho! Getting into nature isn't just about exploring forests and parks. I mean, for some of us, they are too far away or we're not allowed to ride our bikes by ourselves, right? Well, exploring nature is also about finding nature fun, even if we live far away from the forests and parks. Like me, I live in a city where at first glance, it may seem that there is little nearby nature to explore. But if we just look a little closer, we can see that there's actually lots of nature in the city too. And today, we are going to explore it. First, let's check in with our friend, Jesse. He's a ranger with the U.S. Forest Services, and he is going to take us on a virtual tour of something he calls an urban forest. Let's find out what that's about. A forest in the city. Today, we're on a mission for fun. We're going to find out what an urban forest is. I'm Jesse. I'm a forest ranger with the U.S. Forest Service. Are we in a forest? No. Jesse told us we were going to walk through the forest but we met him in the city. I want you to imagine that you're a bird flying high above the city and looking down. Look around, see what you see. Just a lot of houses and apartments and cars. Not that much trees and pretty much sidewalks and buildings. Is this a forest? No. no. Well, at least not now. Well, guess what? This city is in an urban forest. What does urban mean? So urban means it's a large built up area that humans have created for themselves. My name is Henry and with us today are Gia, Jesse, Eo, Bella, and Bella's mom, Neri. If you see something that you would see in a forest, stop and point to it. Okay, so what are you pointing to? There's a nice and fresh and green space. In a forest, what would normally use this type of area? An animal might use this area. They could build a home there. Squirrels could hide nuts in there. A lot of bigger animals might use the grass for food. What is this place that we've just come to? A community garden. People in the community get fruits and vegetables there to eat. So they are taking care of the land. They are stewards of the land. Who else do you think might benefit from this garden? Pollinators like butterflies and bees and some birds. Exactly. I see a bird on the sunflower. Before people built the city, it was probably just a lot of grass and there might have been some trees and some animals. And then people came, they cut down the trees to build houses. How did that affect the habitat for the animals and insects? It makes there'll be less homes for them. And it's important that when we plant things, that we also plant things to allow the animals to also get a little bit of the fruit because we've taken away the trees that were providing food for them. What do you see? I see a dead crab apple that looks pretty disgusting. It smells bad too. I also see a bird pecking at the crab apple. It is eating the crab apple. It's because the bird is hungry. What about the apples that have fallen to the ground already? What might eat these? Maybe some squirrels? A raccoon, maybe? I see ants eating the crab apples right there. Plants that produce fruit that animals can eat and humans can eat are really beneficial in urban areas, especially because so much of their habitat has been lost because we've built houses on it. So we are climbing this hill because there is an excellent view I want you to see. This is a good view of the urban forest. I'm drawing a picture for Plum to show her what it looks like. So does this match what you were imagining when you were flying over your city? Well, I didn't really imagine that there was so many trees. When I first saw the view, I was shocked because there was a lot of greenness. 
like I was surprised about so many trees and everything. This really is an urban force. It's exactly like what Jesse said. Remember when Jesse said to imagine you were a bird flying above the city? Let's imagine we are birds flying above the city and see if you can notice all the nature in the city from way, way high up. Oh, and look for green patches and trees, okay? Let's fly. That was really amazing, right? From way up there, you can definitely see that the city has a lot of green areas and nature to explore. We just have to find it. And wow, seeing the fountain from above was so amazing, right? Well, guess what? A little later, we are going to take a virtual kayak right through the middle of it, so we will see it from up close below too. That's gonna be so awesome and wet. Now we are going to check in with Shauna and Kate here at Five Rivers Metro Parks to talk about another kind of nature in the city, city gardens. Hello, Shauna and Kate. Thanks, Ava. I'm here with my friend Kate and we just got done walking in one of our favorite Metro Parks. We've had a great time today. We sure have. Do you remember those wildflowers we saw? They were beautiful. They were pretty amazing. You know, even walking back to your apartment, Kate, with all this pavement under our feet, nature is still all around us. It really is. You know, I found a way to bring nature back to my home. Would you all like to see it? What do you guys think? I think that sounds like a plan. Let's go. Wow, Kate, these plants look so happy. How did you do this? Well, Shauna, you and I are friends, and we have things in common, and we help each other out. I planted things that are friends and help each other out, too. Right, like today when we were walking in the woods and we saw certain plants growing together, like the nettle and the jewelweed. Exactly, just like that. There are some plants in the garden that really just like to grow together. You can also plant things that not only help each other grow, but they also taste great together too, like my tomato and my basil plant. Would y'all like to see? Yeah, great. Kate, are these the tomato and the basil plants? Yes, right here's the tomato plant and right here's the tomato plant and the basil plant is right here. Now, if you take a leaf, and you rub the leaf with your fingers, and then, oh, you smell it, it smells absolutely wonderful. It's so smooth. Oh, and I love that smell. Mmm, isn't it great? Yeah, tomatoes and basil, that's what makes pizza taste so good. I'm looking around with all these plants. Kate, were you able to do this in one day? Oh gosh, no. Oh, definitely not one day. So this took a really, really long time. So even when you plant, my little plants start out really, really small, and then it takes a while for them to grow real big. These took about two and a half months to grow real big, but it takes every single day me coming out here and weeding and trimming up plants and making sure that they're growing really big and strong. So when I first started my garden, I couldn't decide if I wanted vegetables or flowers in my garden. But then I realized I didn't have to choose. They can all be happy together and they can grow really well together. And with that, I get lots of pollinators, uh, coming to my garden every day and I get bees and butterflies and all kinds of things. It's really wonderful. There's one now. Wow, I see everybody just flying around. And you know, tomato and basil work really, really well together because the basil repels critters that might like to eat the tomatoes and makes those tomatoes that are growing on the vine taste even sweeter. I think I recognize these flowers. Are these marigolds? Yes. I planted marigolds to help keep certain critters away from the tomato that may want to eat it. Some critters think they are stinky, but I think they're really pretty, don't you? I love their orange color, but let me see about this stinky business. Oh, that is pretty stinky. I can see why critters wouldn't want to eat them. You know, I realize that plants have to be healthy in order to bloom. How do you keep these plants so healthy? <laughs> I also keep the soil healthy by adding compost. So we collect our kitchen scraps and scraps from the garden, 
little pieces of plants and twigs and things like that, and then we add them to the compost bin. Hey, could I use that? Sure, awesome. So see, I've got some pieces of kale, some eggshells, a couple little branches, and now your awesome banana peel, and it's gonna make really, really nice compost for us. So what do we, that? yeah. So we're gonna close it, and then we're gonna turn it. Do you wanna turn it? I would love to. <laughs> Kind of hard to turn. Turn it maybe one more time. Okay. Use my muscles. All right, let's see. Look at that beautiful compost. Oh my gosh, can I touch it? Yeah, please do. I'm holding it in my hands and I see how things are breaking down and you know what it smells really good it kind of smells like when you walk in the forest and you smell the leaves and everything after a rain look who I found crawling around in the compost is that a little worm it is it is he must be in there helping things break down and keeping oxygen flowing. That's really cool. You're doing a great job, little bud. All right, we're gonna put you back in so you can get back to work. Hey, you told me how to keep them healthy, but how do I tell all these plants apart? Lots of practice. I get to know my plants like good friends. Tomatoes have sticky leaves and a fuzzy stem. And the leaves smell like a tomato and they can even turn your fingers green. Talk about a green thumb. How did these tomatoes get so big? Well, they start off as these tiny flowers on the plant. Can you see? Yeah, those flowers are small. And I remember when I was young, my grandpa told me about how the bees visit the flowers and move their yellow pollen all around. The flowers are what turn into the tomato. I think some of our friends might know this as pollination. And this is the reason why we get the fruits and vegetables that are so yummy to eat. Can you see them growing? We have tiny flowers right here. And then down here, you can see the flowers die off and you get small fruits. And then the fruits get larger and larger. And these will soon turn red. That's when we know that they'll be good to eat. Wow, those are gonna be huge. Look over here. Yeah, that's a different kind of tomato. There's lots of different kinds of tomatoes. And some of them are different colors and different shapes and different sizes. I'm really excited for these ones to get ripe. That's why I always try and make sure that I have flowers growing in my garden that pollinators will enjoy. Like bees and butterflies, even hummingbirds. Aren't you worried that that bee is going to sting you? No. If you're really calm around the bee and you're not trying to bother it, they're not going to sting you. They're very calm. I do know it's good to plant plants together that have the same kind of needs, like whether they need a lot of water or a lot of sunlight during the day. Exactly. We have a spot on our roof right here. Can you see that rain chain? The rain comes down that chain and then comes down to the ground. But that spot gets rain really, really heavy. And the garden used to get super wet, like a big puddle. So I decided to plant hibiscus and swamp milkweed in that space to help soak up the water because they just love it so much. It's good to plant plants of different sizes in the garden as well. These tall plants, like the cannas, provide support and shade, while smaller plants, like the coneflower, help keep out the weeds. Look at the white alyssum planted close to the marigolds. When you plant them this way, there is no room for the weeds to grow, which means less time weeding your garden. Kate, there really is a lot to discover in your garden. That's how I like it. 
That's why I picked different colors of flowers and flowers that were different shapes um, and colors that can really make this garden pop and make it be fun to look at. Uh, did you know that depending on the types of flowers that you plant, you can attract different kinds of pollinators, different insects to your garden? I've heard that. Let's take a look at some of the critters that are visiting the garden today. Wow, look at the carpenter bee visiting the Monarda. Isn't it so fuzzy? Look at it go. Wow, and the hummingbird with his long beak, he has the perfect tool to get nectar from the bee balm. Look at this beautiful monarch butterfly. She uses the milkweed for food and as a place to lay her eggs. Aren't the colors of her wings so pretty? One of her sisters already sat by and laid some eggs earlier. Let's take a look. Wow, look at those cute monarch caterpillars. By planting milkweed, my garden has become a nursery for these little caterpillars, keeping them safe while they grow up big and strong. Someday soon, they'll be flying in the sky. Wow, the garden is buzzing with activity. Here's another buzzy bee, busy at the flowers. You know, Kate, after seeing your garden and learning about all these cool plants, I really wish that I could grow a garden too, but I'm afraid I just don't have the space. Oh, Shawnee, you can definitely grow a garden, even if you don't have that much space. Look, see, I've got some container gardens up here, and they don't need too much soil or too much space. And even over there, that one doesn't need hardly any soil at all. Can you see it? I can. That is so wild. The plant is actually growing in between the bricks with just a small amount of soil. That's amazing. You can really find space for gardens anywhere. And if you don't have space outside at all, you can always get a container and you can plant a house plant and have something green inside your home. If you can find a spot with sunshine and a clean container that can hold soil and places for extra water to come out, you can definitely have a container garden. For example, we have this one right here, which is an old vegetable crate, and it's got lots of really nice mint in it. Can you smell it? Mm, isn't that the best? Oh wow, that's like the best chewing gum I've ever smelled. <laughs> it really does smell wonderful. And then this one right here is a little bit wacky, but I like it a lot. It's an old uh, laundry container, a laundry bin, and I put potatoes in it. Isn't that silly? <laughs> I think I passed a bucket when I was sitting down in the chair, and it's got something growing in it. Can you tell what it is? That's a tomato, just like we saw earlier. Yeah, I planted it this morning. Isn't it neat? You can grow a tomato in a bucket? You can. If you have an adult to help you drill holes in the bottom of the bucket to let some extra water out, you can definitely grow a tomato in there. You just need some really good soil and some compost you need a tomato and that's all you need. Wow, and that means I can grow my own tomatoes for my own pizza sauce. Exactly. This is a garden that I have in my apartment, but people plant gardens in lots of different places for food, for flowers, and for nature. You know who else has a city garden? Our friends at Adventure Central. Let's check in with them and see what they have growing. Thanks, Shauna. Miss Crystal and I are here at Adventure Central in our very own garden in the middle of the city. We have lots of vegetables in our garden and Kate had tons of beautiful flowers in her garden. So let's visit our garden here at Adventure Central. So one of my favorite plants here in the garden is the dill. I love dill. It's good in salads, like potato salad. Ooh, and I love them with pickles. That's why they call them dill pickles. Yes, it's the best. Remember the awesome pollinators we saw at Kate's house? Well, guess what? We wanted pollinators in our garden as well. So we built these awesome mason bee houses. Pollinators are crucial to every garden. No pollinators, no garden. Another vegetable that we have in our garden is zucchini. The flowers are edible and they're great in breads, sauteed, or even fresh as a fresh vegetable. The vines grow eight feet long and they come from tiny seeds. So remember those itty bitty seeds from the garden? Well, let's make our own windowsill garden. For this activity, we're going to need dirt, seeds, water, and a container. I'm gonna use this container, which kind of has a bottom to it, but it also has holes at the bottom. 
So I'm going to set these two pieces in together. And then I'll add my dirt, like so. And it's okay if you get a little messy. You just want to make sure that you plant, put your dirt evenly in the bottom of the container. So we have a little dirt there and press it down in each one. Eggshell cartons or egg cartons are also very good for this activity, uh, the cardboard ones, because you don't need holes at the bottom. They have, you can put water in them and that cardboard dries up really quickly. So once you get your dirt down into your container, you're going to put your seed, put a seed in each container like so. There we go, five and six, just like that. And then we're gonna cover it up with some more dirt. And again, don't be afraid to get messy. This is the best part of gardening, is that you don't have to be neat. So once you have your seeds covered up, you're going to water just a little bit. You just wanna put just a little bit of water in each section that you put a seed. And then I'm gonna cover it with my container that will keep some of the heat in as I put it in the seal, and then we'll take it over to the window seal. All right, so the next step is very important because our plants need sun to grow. So you wanna set your garden right up into the window and it'll get all of the sun. Our pals at Adventure Central showed us how easy it can be to get a garden growing with just a few supplies. We can't wait to see what you creative campers decide to grow at home. Back to you, Ava. Thanks, Shauna and Kate. That was so cool. Do you remember when they mentioned something called composting? Well, today's nature activity is going to challenge you to make a composter to use for your garden and help out the planet at the same time. Let's check in with our friend Maya. Hi, I'm Maya. Do you want to help out the planet? Everyone wants to help out the planet. You've probably recycled or turned off the faucet while brushing your teeth. Well, today I'm going to teach you how to keep garbage out of a landfill. Not all trash is garbage. Plant scraps, fruit or vegetable scraps, paper, or other organic material can be used to make compost. Compost is a great way to feed any hungry plants inside your garden. Compost is a home to many tiny little animals called bacteria. Bacteria help break down plants once you are done with them. For this project, you will need an empty two liter bottle, some dirt, not potting soil, plant scraps, shredded paper, a spray bottle, a pair of scissors, and a push pin. To build a composter, the first thing you need to do is rinse your bottle and take off any labels. Next, we have a grown-up cut the top of the bottle and, using a push pin, poke some holes on the bottom for drainage. Place the bottle on a plastic tray or plate and start adding the dirt, shredded paper, and some old leaves. Wet the base layer of items using your spray bottle. We don't want to drown it, we just want to get them a little wet. Make sure to keep your composter inside a plastic tray or plate so it doesn't leak. Now, add the fresher items like vegetables, scraps of food, grass, or eggshells. Once that's all in there, we place the composter in an area where we'll get some nice sunlight. You could place the cutoff bottle top upside down like this on top of your composter and this will act as a funnel when you are watering. Each day you want to add water and stir around the contents so the bacteria can find some new food. When not in use, place a kitchen towel over the composter. As the days go on, the bacteria will start to help the fresher items decompose and all the items will eventually turn into compost. Feel free to add items as the days go on, but remember that it will take time for new items to decompose, so be patient. When the food looks ready, take it outside and feed to your garden. And there you have just made some healthy snacks for your garden. Okay, that's our show. Thanks for watching. Bye bye! Maya, that was really creative, thanks. And now campers, you know how to make food for your plants and help cut down on garbage ending up in landfills. I just had an idea. You can also use the compost plant food for your terrarium. All you have to do, 
Oh, excuse me, I'm getting a text that says, what's a terrarium and how do you make one? Do you know what a terrarium is? Okay, let's see if this helps. So a terrarium is like an aquarium, but it's for plants instead of fish. And greenhouses are kind of like great big terrariums, but you can walk into them, like the one at Cox Arboretum, here at Five Rivers Metro Parks. And a conservatory is like a really, really, really big greenhouse, or terrarium, like the one they have in Cincinnati called the Crone Conservatory. Terrariums, greenhouses, and conservatories are all ways that nature can be explored in the city, too. Hey. Let's take a walk through a conservatory and listen as a friend shares inspiring poetry about a connection to nature. In the blush of deep blues, a breeze of hands, fingers smoothing over soil, we bury and raise heroes. Well kept in arms, a seed longing for water, another dances in rain, quaking through mud, the sun pours indiscriminately. We are jeweled light, thirsty for care, moving to and fro, inspired by wings, birds teasing stars. Each flower carries the sky, bends and never breaks. Slender steps, a garden of blooming. We tremble the ground with budding feet. Stories flourish from the earth, buzzing of drunk beetles and bees, laughing lightning bugs and bellowing butterflies. Welcome the glow of growing things in a bed of grass, meadows of meaning. All that nurtures the land lives together. All that nurtures the land lives together. That's really cool. We all can nurture the land and live with nature no matter where we live, right? Now let's check in with Nature Cat and friends as they all work together to make a city garden and find out that no garden is impossible. Time to build a garden, but first, here's a word from our sponsor. Dirt. Yup, dirt. Nature Cat is brought to you today by dirt. Yes, dirt. Play with it. Paint with it. Sculpt with it. Dig a moat or just any old hole. Plant seeds in it. Paint your face with it. Make a handprint, a footprint, even make mud pies. So pick up some dirt today. Dirt by nature. What? We have containers, we have soil, we have seeds and plants. Now it's time to assemble a garden. Water, of course. No, 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 this is all wrong. Here, much better. Ready? And ready. ready. Wait, no, 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 now I'm ready. Watch me, boys. <laughs> Welcome home, little plant cutie. Ah! This is getting to be a little much. Sorry, Nature Cat, this garden needs water. Woo! Daisies, petunias, a symbol of our friendship. Aww. Everything looks beautiful. Oh, the Urban Garden Club will be so impressed. And it'll even be better in a month when everything is growing. Oh, can we come back then and see? Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. We wouldn't miss it for the world. You guys, 
I can't wait to see how the garden looks. Ooh, we're almost there. Wow. Oh, hey, guys. Well, um, what do you think? Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, and so relaxing. Oh. It's everything we were hoping for. And more. But what do the members of the Urban Garden Club think? Well, <laughs> buckle up, Daisy, because we're about to find out. <laughs> <gasps> wow! This garden is made from recycled materials. Oh, how wonderful! We love it! Petunia, the Urban Garden Club would like to officially offer you a place at our side. You must tell us, however did you think of such a unique and wonderful garden design? I owe it all to my good friend, Daisy. She can make a garden anywhere with anything. <laughs> Aw, thanks, Petunia. As long as you have sunshine, water, healthy dirt, and a good container, you can grow a garden anywhere. Well put, Daisy. We would be thrilled to have you as an honorary member as well. Now, if you'll excuse us, we're going to take a stroll in this incredible urban garden. Well, look at us, two members of the Urban Garden Club. I still can't believe this is all real. Like I promised, I'd say again, no garden is impossible for our Daisy. Aw, oh, shucks, you guys. Daisy! 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 Hey, do you think you can build a garden too? All you need are good containers, soil, seeds, plants, and some water and sunshine. And before you know it, you have a garden too. Now, it's adventure time. Five Rivers Metro Parks offers many ways for adventure and recreation. And today we are going to explore recreation in the city. Remember how earlier we saw a fountain downtown from above? That was so cool, right? Now let's join some friends on a kayak adventure to see the fountains up close from on the river. This is gonna be so cool, ready? That was so cool. We are so glad you joined us today for another great day at camp. We learned a lot about nature in the city and that there are so many ways to explore nature no matter where you live. And gardening is a great way to start. As you explore nature where you are, be sure to write your observations in your journal, okay? As you know, at the end of each day at camp, we take a virtual trip to some of the national parks found here in America. We can explore and observe with our pretend binoculars. All you have to do is move close enough to the screen so that when you're looking through your binoculars, you can't see anything but the screen. If you have not made your binoculars yet, you can use your hands like this. So let's explore, and we hope to see you again for more fun at Nature Camp.
Bye.